Well, Russ, while you're using your most available and abundant raw material to generate electricity, there's another company I'd like to tell you about that's turned to rural America to solve its problem, turning soybeans into sofas. It starts out as a flowing mass of goop, but in just a few minutes, it expands into foam, foam that's probably in the sofa in your home. So what's this have to do with agriculture? Well, a key component of this foam comes from fields like this. It's foam made with soybean oil. We're leading the way here in changing, in changing our industry. So we're leading our industry in a new direction. It is a movement, and we view this as the first step in a journey. Two years ago, scientist Dimitris Dunis wondered whether the petroleum elements in high-density upholstery foam could be replaced with soybean oil. How did you approach your partners and say, look, I think that if we add soy to this product, it's going to be better? Well, we told them, first of all, you guys know how to bend beans. We know how to make foam. We can put our efforts together and we could really make something good. And it worked. By replacing just 20% of the formula with soybean oil, the foam remained the same. So 20% was kind of the safe point where you knew for sure that you weren't going to affect the quality of the product. It, it definitely was a safe point. It was a good starting point. It was a point that where we could make an impact. It was a real difference. And at the same time, we wouldn't have to sacrifice anything. Soybeans have long been used for food products plastics, and a host of other creations. The chemical breakthrough made it possible for North Carolina's Hickory Springs Manufacturing Company to create a new foam product they call Preserve, simply by adjusting the ingredients that go into the process. The last two things, this is water, just regular tap water, and this is TDI. Um, these two will react and create carbon dioxide, and that's what blows the foam, makes the foam rise. So those are the last two elements needed to turn yeah. that liquid into the foam that we know. Into a foam, yes. The final mix is poured into a cardboard box which holds the foam as it dries. How long will it take for a block of that size to rise all the way to the top? This should take approximately 120 seconds, around two minutes. Once the surface bubbles pop, the foam is ready. But first it goes into the oven to dry or cure. And you can see, you know, when we take this off, you can feel the foam, it's completely and set. it's still warm. Exactly, yep, this one's warm, and if we touch this one over here now, it would be sticky. But that's the only thing, but you can see inside, it's very tough. Have foam. In the manufacturing process, the foam starts out the same way. It's poured into giant conveyor belts. Slight alterations in the formula give the foam its unique properties. Lighter foam for cushions, thicker foam for seat bottoms. After being cooled in a warehouse, the foam is ready to cut. The uneven top comes off, much like slicing a cake, giving each block a uniform look. The blocks are then measured and cut into shapes. In this case, the different parts of a living room sofa, including the arm and backrest. We didn't feel like we could uh, degradate the product any at all. so. Our goal has always been to give the, the consumer at least as good a product as they've been getting in the past. And actually, the soy-based product has have shown some improvements in certain areas. But we've not given up anything performance-wise. Increasing prices have given new impetus to replacing petroleum with alternate forms of oil, including soybean oil. Price aside, reducing our dependence on petroleum is a significant issue. Because even though you just hear 20 or 30 percent and it doesn't sound like a lot, you said it does translate into quite a significant 18, amount. 18,000 barrels of oil at the current levels, and that's changing daily. But the soybean solution has become important for another reason. This is where we store all of our poly parts, our cushioning, and our pillows. Bradley Gant is with Lee Industries, a North Carolina sofa manufacturing firm. His company switched to the new type of foam because of a growing demand from consumers for environmentally friendly products. What kind of a difference do you notice from a piece of furniture made, made the old way versus this new type of material? Nothing. Th this product is every bit as good. In some cases, it's even better. Gantt says consumers will continue to drive demand for these types of innovations. 
it's nice to know that a product that's going to be grown here in the States and then turned into a product that ends up in your sofa or your chair or in some other product in your home. I mean, it's wonderful. And it gives you that personal enthusiasm and responsibility. Duna says he eventually wants to make foam with 100% soybean oil. Testing so far has been positive. They have an option that they can reduce their dependence on petroleum and petroleum-based products and at the same time not give up anything. You don't have to give up the styling, the comfort, any of those things. The best part of this, about this is that it's grown by Americans and uh, produced by Americans.